Antiochus and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all alike unto Christ our God.
my sake, and I patiently waited for thee, O Lord. My soul hath waited patiently for thy word. My soul hath walked in the Lord. There's a man. Oh.
as king, he is robed in majesty. Let us 
ask of the Lord.
holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Healed by our Lord, 
whose memories will keep this day, and of all the saints that have shone forth in this North American land, and of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, have mercy on us and save us, for as much as he is good, and he loves mankind. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Today um, is, of course, the Lord's Day, um, as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, but we also have a commemoration of uh, one of our modern day saints, well beloved uh, by many in the Orthodox world, Paisios of Mount Athos. Now, I have to admit that my, um, my knowledge and my relationship with Paisios was slim. And then I found myself uh, with, uh, in, in Greece, uh, I was in Thessaloniki, and after liturgy on that Sunday, um, the people I was with said, we're gonna go to Soroti, and we're gonna go to the relics of Paisio. So I said, oh, that sounds nice. And so I figured we'd just cruise over there, uh, make our veneration, and then go home. Well, there was a line winding down from the entire monastery of cars. You had to actually walk up a massive hill and then stand on line for about an hour and a half to go and venerate the relics of Paisios on a Sunday afternoon in Suroti. They actually had those kind of gates that you would see at a place like um, you know, Six Flags or Hershey Park. Uh, those kind of gates that kind of make sure that people stay in line. And I thought to myself, I think I ought to get to know this saint that I'm venerating a little bit better, right? And so I did, I, I made that promise. I said, I wanna to get to know Paisio, I wanna to get to know you a little bit better because I had a, a couple of things that were really weighing heavily on me and I was uh, zealous uh, to have God um, hear my prayer uh, and to have a, a partner in prayer uh, in Paisios because obviously people don't just show up on a Sunday afternoon and wait on a line like that for nothing, right? I was motivated, so I made a promise. Turns out his biography is like this thick. Um, it's a beautiful biography written by um, uh, Elder Isaac, uh, who is one of his disciples, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about him uh, tomorrow. But um, needless to say, it's been five years of bliss getting to know St. Paisios, a really beloved, simple, lovely Christian uh, who uh, was a refuge for so many, even though he himself was expelled from Turkey during one of the exchanges. Uh, he was actually named in his infancy after Arsenios, a very famous saint from that region, and then later took the name Paisios when he entered the monastery. He was a soldier, uh, and even as a soldier, he exhibited um, grace and peace and mercy and love for his fellow soldiers, oftentimes putting himself in harm's way to spare those who had wives and children uh, uh, and other things. He was um, concerned about other people. His, his gift and his craft was woodworking. And all over Mount Athos, one of the, um, one of the prized possessions of many monasteries is something that St. Paisios made. That's how he uh, made a living. Um, uh, is, uh, is he would uh, support the monastery by selling uh, his goods. Um, he didn't have any possessions, uh, but um, was apparently a very uh, competent uh, and faithful woodworker. He not only lived in monasteries on the mainland of Greece uh, and on Mount Athos, but also, as you heard in the hymns, on Mount Sinai. He spent years and years on Mount Sinai, and he um, spent his time in really extreme asceticism. Uh, and some of his only neighbors were the Bedouins. And he struck up a relationship and a friendship with those people who lived there, who probably were never going to convert to Christianity. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But he wanted to serve them for the sake of Christ. There wasn't sort of some sort of like, he said, I'll help you if you assent uh, to uh, be a Christian. Now he served people because that's what Christ would have us do regardless uh, if they were even gonna align themselves with the church. But many did uh, align themselves with Christ because of the ministry of Paisios. 
um, providentially, um, just today, on Saturday, is one of the feasts of Euphemia, the All-Praised. And he had a special relationship with Saint Euphemia throughout his entire life. And it was so beautiful to hear that, that hymn uh, that we sang tonight that, that recognized the special relationship that the saints have with other saints. Uh, and how, what a beautiful bit of providence that this, this, this feast of the vision of Saint Euphemia uh, occurs right on the day before of the repose of the elder Paisios. Um, there's so much more that could be said, but I want to share with you one of his, one of his little stories. And I think that this um, strikes home for many of us and, and shows you the simplicity and the beauty of his teaching. He would tell people that we need to be like a bee and not a fly. He said that if you ask a fly if they've seen any flowers, they'll say no, but there's piles of dung here, 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 and here. Because that's all they're looking for is dung. All of the crap in this world. And there's plenty of it. He says we need to be like the bee. Because if you ask the bee, where's the dung? He says, I don't know, but there's plenty of beautiful flowers here, 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 and here. This is the kind of teaching, the kind of, of, of sort of simplicity and beauty and the easy way to sort of capture this idea of focusing on those things that are good and wholesome. If there's anything lovely, of good report, meditate on these things, the things which you've seen and you've heard, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will fill your minds and hearts through Christ Jesus, through the words of St. Paul. To be those, to be the bee, to be the ones that want to find the goodness around us instead of just focusing on the negative. A simple story, a simple reminder, massive impact in the lives of so many. Not only those who are his contemporaries, but even for us on this day. So as we celebrate this day of the resurrection and we honor one of our contemporary saints, the elder Paisios of Mount Athos, Let's also be those who seek out that which is good. Because the crap is out there. But we need to focus on those things that edify us and bring us to the kingdom of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us.